Hey guys, Sex here. Welcome back to another video. Um, yeah, I just woke up a little early, so I just took a shower and everything. But um, today I wanted to talk about the new issue with the new Survivor that is coming out in Dead by Daylight and the next time, obviously. Um, I wanted to talk about this killer because, or excuse me, not killer, what the hell, how mouse is pretty cool looking. I mean, this is something fresh. But everyone's saying, oh, she feels the same to everyone else. Well, no, I don't, don't believe it. Um, anyway. Uh, I wanted to talk about Tori Kane, and uh, basically she has some sort of headache, but that's irrelevant. I wanted to talk about her part because I really think <clears throat> the um, the perks that she has is overpowered, and the others are just quite questionable. But we're going to get into depth with it real quick, so let's start with the, the next invocation. You know, the first one we had was with Sable. It was weaving spiders, so she has invocation, treacherous crows. Uh, basically, when in the basement, you do the you know circle thing. The invocation takes sixty seconds. Um, survivors can see whatever you're doing. So once it's complete, you become an injured in game broken for the rest of the trial. When the survivor is in the terror radius and the killer scares a crow, their ore is revealed to all survivors for two seconds. Completing the invocation disables that perk for all survivors. Broken prevents survivors from being healed. So, here's my thing. I don't really understand this. When a survivor is in a terror radius and a killer scares a crow, their aura is revealed to all survivors for two seconds. So, here's my thing about um, this perk. Number one, I don't see any situational perk or build or situation there is for the survivor's benefits. So you're going into the basement wasting your time just to get two seconds of orb reading during a chase while in a terror radius while you're scaring off curves. It it makes no sense to me because like I, I kinda I kind of need more like value with the crows because there's there's some perks that have to do with the crows. Uh, like the Lich or like the base kit of Spies from the Shadows. Um, but this is like the uh, weirdest like crow perk in the whole game yet. Um, I don't think two seconds is really worth anyone's time. And I mean, yeah, it might be good during Chase. But I mean, I don't really understand the point of this perk. Um, completely useless. I don't know what behavior was singing just making a random perk to do something with beneficial terror radius um chases or like just in that general area like if you're sneaking around and you're like in the terror radius and the killer scares a crow yeah it might be useful but like it, i don't really understand this i it, it it's completely useless oh well you know now, these are one of the uh, better perks I wanted to uh, talk about. So, Clean Break. After you finish healing another survivor while being healed by another survivor, press the ability button 1 to gain the broken status effect. After 60 seconds, you become healthy. This perk does not activate if you are already broken. This effect is canceled if you go into the dying state. Um, I really don't get this point. Uh... I mean, yeah, it might be just for like, hey, the killer is coming. I'm going to activate this and I'm just going to run and then I'll be healed in like the next minute. I don't really understand why this is beneficial because like you could just make a whole healing build and just heal your fellow survivors. I don't I don't really understand why Behavior made this perk because this just kind of makes healing builds like shitty. Honestly, I don't have a big opinion on this perk. It, it's kind of useless. But in some cases, yeah, if the killer comes around while you're getting killed by another person, you might as well just hit that ability button. But I don't see anyone running this perk whatsoever. Now, this is the perk that everyone is talking about. And we have waited for so long. Because people ask about this uh, kind of perk. Now, here we go. Uh, once per trial, as long as you are not on death hook, so basically if you have, uh, if you're on first hook or no hook, uh, press the ability button in front of the hook survivor to unhook them. When they are unhooked, they lose one hook, and you gain one hook. You also scream, and you gain an exposed status for 20 seconds. 
Um, now, here's my big opinion on this perk. Um, that's crazy. I had never seen anyone, like, talk about this perk in a very long time. And, I, well, no one didn't even know it existed. Like, people were just talking about, oh, what if we just, like, had a perk that just made people lose a hook state? And here it is. But it's so overpowered because this is just a whole big new meta for um, tunneling. And, yeah, I, I just... I just think this is really a crazy perk. Um, wow. See, my thing is that, like, people actually do believe in the tunneling meta. And I just really think that this tunneling meta is, um, like, really shitty. And behavior don't want to fix it. What, like, a killer being around your hook and you get, like, a meter fills up until you get a free... Kobe, like, no, that's not, uh, that's just completely useless, but Shoulder the Burden is actually a perk that can really fucking help with tunneling, and I think this might be a meta perk in some cases, but I don't know yet, um, but this perk, it looks ridiculously overpowered. Uh, the second part of it, Scream and Exposed as, I mean, it, it, it comes with a consequence of your action, and, um, if you can make it worth it during the 20 seconds of running away from the killer, I mean, shit, probably the killer might not just care about your scream because screams do reveal ores, by the way, if you didn't know that. Um, but the exposed status is kind of, kind of whack. I'm not going to even lie to you. Um, because it's like, can you actually get away in this situation of saving your fellow survivor just to gain one hope? Because think about this. If, let's say, you're unhooking someone, they lose their hook, but you gain a hook, right? I am at one hook now. You scream, you're exposed, the killer is on your tail. What if you fail to chase and you get instantly knocked down and he throws you up on the hook? You're on second hook already. Think about that. Um, That's crazy because now the killer will know you're running that perk and, you're gonna, and they're going to be like, oh... Okay, well, I could just tunnel this uh, survivor out since he's already at two hooks. That's crazy. Uh, there should be... Um, it should be more than that. It should be like, once you gain a hook, the next time you are hooked, you only stay at one hook until the next hook you get on. Which is... That should be fair enough. But with this, consequence and actions is just bizarre and i think this is kind of a non-balanced perk i just think this is kind of a meta anti-tunneling perk and i kind of don't have a big like i just don't really understand why i'd be here for my experts it's like seriously bro but on the flip side let's talk about how master so let's talk about scorch hook jagged compass at the start of the trial at the four random hooks are changed into scorch and you see their ores obviously when a survivor is unhooked from a hook, it becomes a Scorch Hook. When you hook a survivor on a Scorch Hook, the aura of the generator with the most progress is revealed in yellow for 10 seconds. This is good. This is a perk that they can finally make and say this is good. Because not only that you're getting more um, Scorch Hooks from basic hooks, but you are getting more information on which gen is almost done, and that is good. It could be combined with Discordance, uh, pain res, that's a good build. Honestly, that's a 10 out of 10 Scorch Hook perk. And I'm glad Behavior actually has the mind to make something good for once. Let's talk about No Quarter. No Quarter. When a survivor reaches 75% healing progress while self-healing, they are faced with continuous skill checks. If one of these skill checks is missed or the heal is interrupted, the survivor suffers from the broken status for 30 seconds. Now, here's my thing. This is really good with the anti-healing uh, meta. And I think this perk will actually get some fucking value. Even when it's a 70 for 70 for side. I can't even talk. Like, I, I just think that no quarter is going to be a meta like anti-heal. That's what I think it is. But it, it could probably be a good combo for Doc, maybe. I'm not so sure. But, um, yeah, but, like, if they fail... Broken for 30 seconds is crazy. 
Um, honestly, anti-healing build is going to go crazy with no quarter. And then the cool name perk that I actually kind of do, like All Shaken Thunder. After you fall from height, your lunge attack distance is increased by 75% for 16 seconds. And then it has a 5 second cooldown. Dude, here's the thing. Cooling Graw with this perk, you're done. Yeah, the survivors have no chance of getting out of this perk. Honestly, I think All Shaken Thunder is going to be the meta for lunge attacks. And, uh... Not if you fall, you also have Coon Graw just for chases. This is really good. Oh, uh, wow. I, I should have read it more into this. But, uh, yeah, I really think chases is going to be really good with this perk. And um, Coon Graw is going to be a thing. And then you could just, like, slap on Surge or something like that. I mean, seriously, this is a... Uh, wow, that's a meta-breaking perk right there. I mean, holy shit. I don't even know what to say about that. Overall, I really think the Survivor and the Killer perks are uh, one in between the favorites. The Killer obviously has the upper hand perks, but I don't know about uh, Tori. I, I just think these perks are completely useless in some cases. But if in the future, when uh, people start making videos on the new perks of, for the Survivors, probably so, probably there'll be a whole new meta that I'm probably just not thinking about right now. But um, honestly, I think... Um, there could be some use for it, but for the killer, yeah, ha have fun. You probably just want to uninstall the game in, like, a week as soon as it comes out. Like, come on. But, uh, that's all I wanted to talk about. Um, yeah. But, uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and, uh, I'll be back on the 21st with a fresh video. Uh, I will also have a special guest, uh, with this video if I could just figure shit out first. But if I can't, then I'll just do what I gotta do. Anyway, guys, have a good one. Yeah, I'm going to hit the set all minutes.